Hello everyone, my name is Philip McLeod, or as I'm known in nightlife circles where I live, Shirley You Jest, drag queen. I am a former student of Charlene's, and I performed at Ohio Light Opera the same year she was working there. Charlene has tasked me with taking all of the knowledge that I have learned over the years as a drag queen in nightlife, and share it with all of you. Just a little background about myself. I am a drag queen living in New York, out in Harlem. I have been in nightlife for the last six years. I've written and produced and directed and choreographed and done all sorts of fun things in nightlife and it has given me a wealth of knowledge that I am now happy to share with all of you. I've also been told by Charlene that some of you are taking this class because you are interested yourselves in drag or are already doing drag and want to step up your game. First of all, I want to say, well done. Congratulations to you for dabbling in the field. I thoroughly encourage everybody to try drag at least once in their life, but I give mad props to those people who are doing the same and getting themselves into the career and doing all of the work. So kudos to you. In that spirit, this video will encompass one entire Shirley You Jest look. There will be a strong emphasis on makeup and wig construction. Overall, we are going to be looking at the entire look from start to finish, from its conception to its actual birth, as it were. Ugh. So I am happy to bring to you now in this video one full, complete look from start to finish. I'm gonna be talking a lot about different tips and tricks and things that I have learned. Before we get started, there's a couple of things that I wanna to mention to all of you. Drag is a very important part of the LGBTQ community and of queer history. So the first point I wanna make is know the history and where it comes from. A lot of drag that we know today, or at least that came out of North America, has a lot of its roots in what was the Harlem ballroom scene of the 70s and 80s. Those people got a lot of their inspiration from the trans sex workers of the time who were making themselves up in order to pass for society. And essentially, those people got their looks and beauty standards from old Hollywood film and TV. It's a very strange, cyclical nature, but there's a lot to unpack in all of that. But most importantly, it's important to know where it comes from and pay homage to all of those people that came before us. That sort of segues into my next point, which is keep an open mind about gender presentation. What one person considers feminine, a different culture could consider a masculine quality. A person from the Midwest is not going to see glamour the same way that someone from the East Coast is going to see it. And the things that I am going to bring to you today are going to be one subset of one person's view from one city, from one culture, based on one economic background, when we live in a sea of billions of stories. Just be mindful of how someone may see gender a different way than you do. That leads nicely into my third point, which is, just like Cole Porter taught us, experiment and you'll see. One of the main essences and one of my favorite parts about doing drag is that it is performance art that is based off of someone's blown up concept of gender. It is an art form that by its nature is extremely passionate and tied to one's own perspective. What I'm going to show you today is based off of, as succinctly as I could possibly make it, a traditionally Western female standard of beauty. That is a lot of air quotes for a lot of different labels to put around. But that's the beauty of it. It's all based on how we see the world. So don't get mired down by any problems of how you may see one gender or how you see a, a certain face. I have learned as a gender fluid person that drag lets me make my body my canvas. And I love that concept. So I'm taking that perspective and my face and transforming it into a different gender that is reminiscent of my Point of view. I'm going to be sharing a lot of things that I have learned that have helped me with my face and helped me change little things and alter the geography and the topography of my face. If you want a little extra reading, I highly encourage you to pick up Kevin Aquan's book, Making Faces. I love his take on makeup and this notion that you can really transform any person's face into any other person's face simply by changing some light and perspective. Which leads me into my last point. What I am doing may not necessarily work for you, but they're just tips and tricks. So without further ado, here is how I work out Shirley You Jest. Ding! 